Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us wherever you are. I pray that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, we are doing this series called Time to Grow, and this is a spiritual growth series. Now, this is the first time I've ever married up the weekly messages with the daily devotionals during the week. I've never, ever done it before in all the years, and I, and I've, I've, I was looking the other day. I've recorded about 2,000 daily devotionals, and I've never linked them together. And, uh, but I have this time because this is all about spiritual growth. And, uh, and, and the title of today specifically, the title of today's message is, uh, is looking after what God has given us. Looking after what God has given us. So I want to talk about that. Looking after what God has given us. But there's a second title as well. And it's this. Use it or you'll lose it. Use it or you'll lose it. If we were to go have a look at the earth from the moon, if you were to have a look at the earth from the moon, um, you see the earth from the moon and it looks, it looks magnificent. I haven't been there personally, but I've seen pictures. And, and then, you know, but there's not a lot of detail of the earth, is it? It's just that blue with the kind of white that you can see in the background. Uh, but as you move closer, you actually begin to see more as you, as you get closer. The detail stands out a bit more. Continents begin to appear, oceans. And then the closer you get, the outline of rivers and mountains. And then the closer you see forests and trees. And then whatever you, ever the land, the detail of the environment is you begin to see. Um, but where, but, but where, you la- where, where the land and the ocean meet, the deserts and the forests, and the, uh, you begin to see great intricate detail of what it's like. And you begin to experience it. Um, now, if you were a space traveller and you were coming towards Earth, you, that's exactly what you'd see. What you would see is, is something in the distance, a dot in the distance that all of a sudden in time would get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, and you would expand. Um, and in all of our lives, we need to expand in things. Our whole life's about expanding in many ways. Anybody who's had a child, you have bring home a new baby from hospital and in those days and in those weeks, afterwards you expand and, and, you, and you keep coming to new understandings. You keep having new emotions and new capacities if you're going to bring that child to independence. It's the same with our relationship with God. In our relationship with God, when I was young, when I was young, uh, I saw God as someone who made the world and I saw God as someone to be feared. I saw God as someone who was about rules and regulations. And that if you broke those rules, that that, uh, my ignorant little boy understanding was if I broke those rules and I happened to die at that time, I wouldn't get to heaven. I had a child's understanding of God and his love. I had a child's understanding of it. Um, He was this judge, he was this executioner, and he was out to get you if you did the wrong thing. I meet heaps of adults who are in their 70s and 80s who still have that view of God, who still have that belief of God that he's, in a sense, out to get you. Um, uh, But I sensed as I got older and as I got closer to God um, and as I grew in maturity, as I kind of landed on God... um, I realised that I didn't have the full understanding of who God is. Um, I, I've learned over the years many things about God. I've learned many things about God. And, and, and when, I, when I reflect about my understanding today and then my understanding in a year's time or two years' time, my understanding's different. And, and you can look back and you can say at any given time, well, is, is it that you've changed your mind? Um, I first gave this talk that I'm giving today in 2002. That was the first time I gave this talk. And when I read my notes for this talk from 2002, oh my goodness, what I thought back then and what I think now is so different because I've changed. God hasn't changed, I've changed that we're not stagnant, we're not in the same place, that as we draw closer to God, we get just like as we're coming towards earth and we would begin to see the blue of the oceans and then the continents and then the trees and the mountains 
As you get closer to God, you see more about his personality and who he is. Um, and and there's sometimes there's information that you can't know. You can't know. There's information you can't know until you've been through certain things in life that you just don't know. For example, um, I, I don't think I could ever have understood what it was to be a grandparent until that day that Hannah was born. I, 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 I didn't understand the emotions. I didn't understand the feeling. I didn't understand anything about it. But I'd heard about being grandparents. My mum and dad were grandparents. I met other people who were grandparents, but I didn't know what that was like. I didn't know what it was like. Um, in other words, if we don't get certain basic foundations right, if we don't have certain levels of maturity and things happening within us, there are certain things that we just can't know. And it's exactly the same with God. Our understandings of God, that there's certain practices, there's certain maturities that we need that, to be able to fully understand God. And, and I want to speak about one of these things, something that Jesus spoke about often. Um, and, and I'm going to try and expand our information about it. Um, I, I want to look at how we look after what God has given us. I want to talk about how we look after what God has given us. See, all of us have various gifts. All of us have various gifts that have been given. Different amounts of, we've all been given different amounts of time. We've all been given certain levels of resources. I had a friend of mine that I really enjoyed his company and in COVID, one day it was my birthday, he rang up and says, I've got COVID. Three weeks later, he'd passed away. Healthy, no underlying medical conditions at all. He, was ju he just passed away. Um, uh, you know, Scripture is very clear. We are to use our gifts, time and resources to fulfil the purposes for which, uh, for which we are placed on the earth. Scripture is very clear. If you read the Scriptures, it says over and over, uh, it, it's very clear. We are to use our gifts, time and resources to fulfil the purposes for which we are placed on the earth. Uh, the word for this is stewardship. The word for this is, is, is a word called stewardship. Now, often when we think about stewardship, we often think about money. And that's an aspect of it, but that's not, that would, to say that's what it is, that wouldn't be a rich understanding of it. Stewardship is the management of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Uh, or you might say stewardship is the management of our time, energy, and resources. Or you might say stewardship is the management of our time, talent, and finances. And Jesus would often speak to his followers about how they would steward their time, their talents, and their treasures. And he would say to them, if you want to walk more deeply, listen to this, if you want to walk more deeply with me, then let me teach you how to manage these areas, Jesus would say. If you want to walk more deeply with me. Your maturity as a person and as a spiritual person will depend on how much you have an understanding of how you manage your time, talent, and your treasures. If you want to walk, if you want to walk more deeply with me, then let me teach you how to manage these areas. How we manage them directly affects our spiritual walk with God. Our time, our talent, and our, and our resources, our treasures. It directly offense, affects our relationship with God. There are some people who think, well, my relationship with God is affected by the fact that I turn up to church on Sunday, and that's what I'm meant to do. And I don't worry about only those other things. But think about it for we Catholics who go to confession. What is it that we confess? How we manage our time, our talents, and our resources. They're the things we talk about. What did you do with your time? What did you do with your talents? What did you do with your resources that you have? They're the things when you get to heaven, God is going to say, count for them, please. You had this, I gave you this much time. I give you this much talent and ability within yourself. I gave you this much uh, material goods. What did you do with them? But many of us don't think about it that way. What we think about is, did I go to church on the weekend? 
And, and, and that's only one question that we might uh, get asked. Um, it, it affected my heart and my love relationship with God in way, it, sorry, it affects my heart and my love relationship with God in, in, in incredible ways. Some years ago, I did hear a series on finances, uh, a Christian series on finances, and it deeply affected my relationship and walk with Jesus. And I wouldn't have thought that that would be the case, hearing something like that. Um, and I made some decisions regarding my finances that deeply changed my life. And, and, and I didn't realise that God would put in my life so that in years to come would be the things I stood on so that I could stand here. That he was setting up in the past in practical ways, that my spiritual maturity would be affected my, by my ability to understand what he was saying to me about this whole area of finances. That it deeply affected my prayer life, my love life of, with God. Um, and, it wouldn't, and, that and that changed me, and it wouldn't have ever happened if I hadn't heard that series on stewardship. In a sense, I saw more of the detail of who God is. I landed on God and I, and I heard him say something. See, our relationship with God expresses itself in the disposition of our heart. Our relationship with God expresses itself in what's your heart like? What's the interior of you? You might say, uh, theologians sometimes talk about your heart being your truest self. It's Jesus' comments where he talks about what comes out of the heart, out of the mouth as an expression of what's inside. It's not what you eat that makes you impure. It's what comes out that makes you impure. Because that's the reflection of what is in here. Uh, in here. That our relationship with God expresses itself in the disposition of our heart. It expresses itself. And that's one of the reasons why one of our values as a ministry is we value the poor, the weak, the hidden and the hurting. More than anything else, that's about the heart, isn't it? We value excellence, as in doing the best we can, because that's the value of our, of our talents, isn't it? And so, and so our relationship with God expresses itself in the dis disposition of your heart. What is your heart like? I think it's one of the reasons why I, I struggle at times with politics and some of the politics that have been in the media in recent times where, 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 where there's a bitterness and there's a nastiness to it that goes beyond, beyond the differences of opinion as to how things should occur. Politics is all about the, 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 the debate of ideas and the ways we should do the things that we should do. And so the political arguments that are between people is right and appropriate that people stand up and say, I think this and I think that and I think this. When I played sport when I was younger, there was this whole idea, do you play, and we used to play football, one of the, one of the things that they would, the coach would say to us is, do you play the football or do you play the man? As in, do you try and hurt the person so they can't play or do you go and chase the ball? Yeah. That's my issue with politics at times is that people play the man in order to win, to get themselves into the place of power rather than the debate of ideas and differences which are right and proper that we have. The differences are not wrong. As human beings, we're going to see things different ways. As human beings, we're going to have passions about things in different ways. We're going to have ideas about how we run things and organise things. We're going to have ideas about, about culture and, 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 and military force and economies. And they're all right to debate and they're all right to argue about. But do you play the man? And so, see, our relationship with God comes out of a disposition of our heart. And when our politicians in front of us play the person and downgrade the person, it says something about their heart and their standing before God and their relationship with God. And I realise people will write to me now and tell me that, that, you know, how dare I? But it's true. Read the Bible. Don't listen to me. Read the Bible. 
Our relationship with God expresses itself in another way, by our daily action, the daily actions of our life. The daily actions of our life. If you want to know what's important to someone, have a look at how they spend their time, their talent and their treasure. Have a look at the way the people spend their time, their talent and their uh, their treasure. So if we're going to get practical about how to walk more deeply with God and understand how we should steward our resources, let's talk about these things. Um, But we almost, almost, there's got to be a prayer that sits within us. And, and, And I wish I'd put this on the screen, but I didn't. But this prayer should say something like this, God, I'm open. God, I'm available. Speak your word to me. Plant it deep within me. May it be planted in fertile tile soil within me. May it take root and grow. God, I'm open and God, I'm available to you. Here's, here's the thing when we think about stewardship. Everything, everything that exists belongs to God. Now you kind of stop and go, yeah, of course. But sometimes we don't act like that, do we? We don't act like that. I know I don't act like that. Probably all of you would act like that. But all of you out there probably wouldn't. But this group of people, amazing. Yeah. Um, Psalm 21 verse, 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. All that is in it. Everything is the Lord's. Um, the world and those who live in it. Everything is the Lord's. It says, it says in Psalm 50 verse 9, I will, This is God speaking. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every wild animal of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air and all all that moves in the field is mine. In other words, what God is saying is, what can you give me? What can you give me? I was listening to something um, last night and someone asked asked uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend, asked the question, what do you buy her for a present? When you're a billionaire, you probably can buy most things, can't you? Yeah. Well, what do you buy? And, and, and he goes, well, I can't buy any material things. Because what can you buy? Material. Me, you could buy me a whole stack of stuff, you know. I'm available. I'm not in the Taylor Swift category. And he's got it at even another level, so much more. He doesn't want anything that we've got. You can't give him anything. Um, For every it says in Romans chapter 11, verse 36, not on the screen, it says, For everything comes from him. Everything exists by his power and is intended for his glory. To him be the glory forevermore. Everything exists by his power. He created everything and is intended for his glory. Everything exists by his power and is intended by his glory. What, what does glory mean? Magnificence. Everything is it, that about God is to display the magnificence of God. He just can't help himself. He's so perfect. He's so beyond. He's so other. Every, everything, everything, everything is created... He's not. That puts him in a different category immediately. He's in the not created category. And you know what? He's the only one in that category. Everything and everyone else is in the created category. So we belong to God. Uh, The time we have belongs to God. The, The talents and the gifts that you possess belong to God. The resources, the finances that you possess belong to God. Nothing is yours. Nothing. Yesterday I bought Rosemary a new vacuum cleaner. I thought to myself, Rosemary, I need you to clean the house some more. (laughs) Now I'll get letters for that too, but anyway. (laughs) No, I bought Rosemary a vacuum cleaner and, and I said, here, this is yours. And she loved it. But she won't take it with you when she goes to heaven. It'll just be given to someone else. 
Psalm 25, uh, Matthew 25, verse uh, 14 says this, For it's as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to to another two, and to another one, to each one according to his own ability. This passage of scripture keeps speaking to me. I only spoke on this a couple of weeks ago, but it just so keeps talking to me. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And And then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made you five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with uh, with the two talents, he came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. And here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, uh, that I reap where I did not sow And gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who with the ten talents. For for to all those who have more will be given. And they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The The man in the story is one of complete and obvious wealth. The story is, the man go, of, is of a man who goes away for a period, a period of time and he divides up his wealth and he gives it out, expecting that they will expand it. After a long time, he comes back uh, and, he, and he gets people to give an account. The one who had five doubled it. The one who had two doubled it. But the third had hidden it in the ground, thinking that he knew the master's heart uh, and that he would have, and he'd be satisfied just to get his money back. Uh, without increase, use, or loss. And, and Jesus describes, as he tells this story, he describes the third servant as wicked and mean. The one who didn't use his talents, he describes as wicked and mean. Oh, I think judgment day will be a bit harsh for him. You know? The first two talent servants were rewarded and promised and more, uh, more, while the third was shut out and stripped of what he had. And here's the principle. Those who have but do not use their talents uh, will pay the price for their lack of use. We pay a price. See, there is, there's a master or a noble man a divine owner generously entrusts his positions, possessions to his people. The master is still in control of land, of servants, possessions, everything. Where he physically, where he physically is present or absent, it's still his. And the master takes a risk every time he goes away. And yet he, that his servants will squander it. No one is able to predict when he comes back. No one knows when he's coming back. The servants have an element of control. Sounds like our lives, doesn't it, with God? But they don't don't have ultimate control. Here's three things. Our time, talents and treasures are owned by God. We have to keep remembering that. They're owned by God. My dad died some years ago. He took nothing with him. His five sons divided up what he had and made decisions about what would happen with all he had, because someone had to. 
and it will happen to each of us, that someone else will dispose of those things that you call precious. None of us will take it with us. Our time, talents and treasures are our responsibility to manage and develop. We're meant to get better at the things we do. Um, And thirdly, we will give account for their use. Um, See, we lose, so some will lose and some will gain. And and so a question you could ask is, uh, is of yourself is, what do you need to relinquish today that's in your control that you shouldn't be managing? And what is it that you should take on? Are your hands open to God? If you have a posture that is open to him? Stewardship is not an action, but it's a lifestyle. Stewardship is not an action, it's a lifestyle. How will I look after my town, talents and treasures? Um, uh, there's a deeper quality than, uh, to, to stewardship than just our actions, but a richness in how we can live. I said before I gave this talk in 2002, I go back and read the talks I gave that I've kept for all these years, and sometimes now I will take five or six talks that I did back then just to make one, and much of them I will throw away because I've grown. We all do that, don't we? And yet I've kept them. I've kept them. Um, I've kept them. I asked uh, Emma if she will give a talk that I heard her give when she was 20. 20 years have gone by and she's going to give the the same talk. I wonder if it will be the same. I doubt it highly. Because she will have grown, right? Um, Jesus is in control. Jesus is. He's the guide for the use of the way we're living. And holiness is about coming before God all the time and saying, how am I living now with what I've understood now that I've landed on you, now that I've got closer to you? You're not just the distant earth in the distance. I now stand close to you, Lord, because I now hear your voice. I see what your personality is. I've come to understand what you feel. I see what you think. And yet, There's so much more. Stewardship is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. It's it's why so many become detached the older they become. Because you realise you can't bring. When I was younger, I was a bit of a hoarder, really. Rajmi would tell you that. I was a bit of a hoarder. I kept all sorts of things. Now I look at things and I've just progressively been reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing. You know why? It's just not important now. Because something else has risen in my heart, and it's him. There's a couple of laws of stewardship. You would have heard me say it already. The first law of stewardship is this. To the one who has, more will be given. It's a principle. To the one who stewards well what you have, more will be given. More will be given. Conversely, to the one who has not, even that which he does have will be taken away from him. Think about your husbands, your wives, friends that you know, who today in some ways, they may have more possessions, but they have less within themselves. In the scriptures, it says in Matthew, his master replied, well done, good and faithful service. You've been servant. You've been faithful in a f- with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. If a child has a talent and uses it, their capacity increases. The capacity increases. When I first started giving talks, Back in 1990, it was a long time ago. I remember I gave a talk for about 10 minutes. I've still got the notes. It was terrible, but 10 minutes felt like an eternity. 
now I can get to 10 minutes before I get to the introduction, <laughs> you know? Because the more you do something, the more you exercise, the better you get. The more you pray, the more you will hear his voice. The more generous you are, the, you know, the more you will increase in generosity. The more you love, the more you'll grow in love. The more you grow in stinginess, the more stingy you will become. The more you are hateful, the more hateful you will become. It's a principle. It's a principle of Scripture and you cannot beat it. But yet so many of us try. You can't. Stewardship is that all of our labour and of all of our leisure, we honour God so that the fruit of our labours will bring him glory. Again, stewardship is that all of our labour and in all of our leisure, we honour God so that the fruit of our labours will bring him glory. As you go home, as you do the things that you do, what is it that in your life where you need to stop and go, is that something that I should be doing? Is that something I should be spending my time with? spending my talent on, spending my treasures on? Are there things that I need to let go? Are there things that I need to clean out of my mind and of my heart and of my house? Are there things that are no longer are important? Because as you land on him, as you come close to him, you see his personality and you see what is valuable to him and what he treasures. What is it that you need to go home and get rid of? What is it that you need to do more of? To all of our hosts online, write that down. Write that in the chat. What are the things in your, that where you're spending your time, your talent, your treasure that you need to let go? What are the things where in your, in your, in your mind, in your heart and in your house that you need to rid yourself of? What are the things in your, uh, what are the things that you need to do more of, that you need to prioritise more of? Time's ticking for all of us. It doesn't stop. Rosemary and I were just thinking, Rosemary said to me just yesterday, we were talking, and something happened 20 years ago, and she stopped, Rosemary stopped and said, where did the time go? Where did it go? It hasn't sped up. It hasn't slowed down. It's just going. It's just going. So, time to grow. This is an opportunity to go and do the hard work of clearing out your mind, your heart and your house and making a decision about what are the things that you need to put in that would touch you deeply. Loving Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus and through the power of your Holy Spirit, Allow us, Lord God, to hear your voice. Allow us, Lord God, to clean out our mind, our heart and our house of those things that are not important and to put within them the things that are truly important, the things that we can st we'll be able to stand before God and say, from this point, from this moment in our life, right now, I multiplied what you gave me. I just didn't keep it for a day where I could return it to you, shiny and bright. But I took it out. I multiplied it. I made it more. Father God, come, give us wisdom to every voice that's listening, every ear that's listening. Listening to the sound of my voice, give us wisdom as to how we respond, Father, right now. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what we're going to do right now is as we come to the end, we're going to take up our offering. Our offering is when we give 
of our treasure to God. And we use that treasure to be able to share the gospel with more people, to touch more people around the world. There will be people today, as a result of today, who will go home and maybe sell their home, maybe sell their car, maybe change a job or a career, will go home and sit with their husband and say, please forgive me because I have not stewarded what I was given. Will sit with their wife and ask forgiveness. Will sit with a friend and make plans for the future because based on stewarding what they have better. There are many people who need to hear the gospel and need to hear that message. To all of our Faith Builder partners, I want to say thank you to you for your contribution. Every month you make all of this possible. And to everybody else, I'm just so grateful for what you do. You can go to the Give tab or go to this address on the screen. And here we can pass the buckets and we can ask the Lord to bless us. Why don't we pray over what we give? Loving Father, we thank you today that you love us so abundantly. We pray, Lord God, that as we go from this place, that we would steward well what you've given us in mind, heart and action. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, to everybody, wherever you are, I look forward to seeing you from somewhere. I'm traveling soon, so you never know where I'll be. I look forward to talking to you then. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.